Okay, I'll do a thing. What? 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 We gotta do a clap sync. Clap sync. Okay, I should probably start recording then, huh? Yeah, I was gonna ask that. <laughs> well, I'm sure we were at that point yet, you know. You never know with us. All right. No, we're going. I'm ready. Uh, as as I've, I feel like I'm forgetting something. I feel I had something. Oh, I guess I could send you all those images. All right, we'll, we'll clap sync now, and then uh, we'll just go as I do this. You ready? Don't look at your Discord for, like, like, uh, like, it's uh. Not, if I look at it, I mess up the recording. So I'm going to look on my phone when you tell me you want me to. Okay, hold on. Okay, hold on. Okay. Oh, no. Never mind. I might. We'll clap sync right now. But, uh, all right. Three, two, one. I did your mic pick that I didn't hear it actually come through discord, but I'm assuming your mic picked it up. Yeah, it 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 should have. Um, It was a bit. Yeah, I see it on the audio recording track, so it okay. should have. So here is all the things I want you to see. Just a few images. All right. <clears throat> we ready to go? I think we are ready to go. All right, let me start the timer. And... hey -o! Welcome back to episode three of Positively Review. Nessa, let me ask you a quick question. If yeah. the story for the Falcon and the Winter Soldier was literal, what would mm -hmm. the story be about? If it were literal? Yeah. What, what, did, what does that mean? Like if there weren't like, superpowers? Like if... Uh, Bucky was literally a soldier that only worked in the winter, and uh, the Falcon uh -huh. was a Falcon. Oh, got it, got it. Um, then it would be about uh, getting lost in Siberia and trying to survive using a Falcon to hunt the little snow bunny rabbits, keep them alive. It's, how, did, how did they befriend each other? How did his falcon uh, was like, yo, you know what? I'll give you some of my bunnies that I hunt. It was, it was that metal arm. It was just, it was shiny. And it was this really attractive perch. And so I was like, you know what? Let's I see, go. I see. So in, the, in this, the Winter Soldier also has had his arm cut off. And uh, yes. Okay. I see. Yes. No, no, no. He lost it to Frostbite. So oh, like, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. All right. Uh... Yeah. To be honest, I wouldn't see that movie, but uh, sounds great. <laughs> hey, well, it's not a movie. It's a it's a mini series. Oh, it's a mini a... series. Even it's better. Good. Even you know, more so of that. Else. Disney changed what it was classified as. So WandaVision, I think, is a TV series or a mini series. And then Falcon and the Winter Soldier is something else. Or they're flipped, but it's so that they could be nominated for different Emmys or Oscars or whatever it is. So they like changed the classification of one of them so that they could both win their own separate categories. The, I it's weird to me that Marvel shows are going for awards. I guess they don't have a lot to compete with right now, though. So, well, this year, a little different, but yeah, they don't have a lot to compete with. So fair enough. All right, well, welcome, as I said, Positively Reviewed. We're on episode three. Yes, we're talking about Falcon the Winter Soldier. I am John, uh, who I'll tell you I'm willing to cut off my arm if I got a robot one that was exactly like Bucky's. And that is Nessa, who dresses up as a falcon on the weekends. Um, wait, why do you get to be the Winter Soldier and I have to be a bird? Well, I, I had it set that I was a bird before, but... I felt like you're more the bird. 
than I am. I'm the bird. What does that mean? Uh, you know, don't worry about it. <laughs> it's fine. So, uh, yeah, positively reviewed. Hit them, Nessa. What do we do? Who are we? Uh, well, you are, you got, you got John and Nessa here and, you know, we give you a very accurate, very specific, you know, insightful review that definitely isn't always positive. No, if you're, if you're here, welcome to the show. Uh, there's, there's a lot of negativity out there and we really want to focus on the fun things of stuff that comes out that we enjoy. And we want to give you the positive side, the positive spin on everything. That doesn't mean you won't catch some other, uh, uh, nuances in that but if you're looking for an objective review you're in the wrong place but if you're looking for that like feel good vibe train welcome to the show and you're gonna find us everywhere on social media and youtube and everything at pos reviewed pod so p-o-s reviewed p-o-d yeah and we will be posting supplemental things there this, this episode we got a few images and stuff that we'll definitely be sharing uh Spoiler warning right now. Yes, we are just we're going to be diving right into spoilers. We'll, we'll try and keep it a minimum as much as we can. But with this series, man, if you if you haven't seen this series already, what are you, what are you doing? Why are you why are you listen to this? You could be watching the show right now. So just go watch the show. Uh, but yeah, just spoiler warning. We'll try and avoid as much. But it, it's hard to talk about TV series like this as a whole and not really have spoilers. What are we talking about today? What are we, what are we talking about? Well, that, that thing we're going to be spoiling is, uh, you know, it's the, the soldier in the winter doesn't have the arm and the, the falcon. Uh, but no, so it's uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So a TV series, mini series, whatever they classified it as uh, greatest piece of content we have ever had on the show until next week. Uh, but absolute best thing in the world. What did we do? We have, was was this a was this an eight or a nine episode? Or I always I always forget a little bit there because I get it mixed up. It with was WandaVision six. And think that it was six. It was six. Yeah. For some reason, I thought it was eight. WandaVision right, well, was eight. WandaVision was eight. See, I told you I get it mixed up between the two. Yeah, but yeah, no, it's Falcon and the Winter Soldier. That's what we're talking about, and uh, you know something that is keeping us going through a a lack of of other content a little bit. But uh, now I don't. You wanna you wanna take us away with the specifics of of who we should be crediting for this masterpiece? Yeah, I forgot the elevator pitch, but uh, <laughs> Falcon the Winter Soldier. If you don't know don't know what it is, it's a Marvel television show set in the Mar the the overall uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe, starring Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Stan. It's basically, long story short, it's a buddy cop movie where they're hanging out, doing, running some missions, and trying to stop a group called the Flag Smashers as uh, they are super powered or, or they have been given the super soldier serum and now kind of have powers and they're trying to stop the world. They're trying to make the world a better place, which they believe it was when everyone got snapped away from Thanos from Infinity War, um, and they're doing the best to stop governments and take them down to, I guess, get back to that point, which... Yeah, so the whole that's concept, insane. right, was that, was that things were better when, when there were less people. Right. So I guess they were on Thanos' side, which is an interesting side to take. Uh, hey, but it we, that... we know that you're on his side. You were going for, you were worse than Thanos. <laughs> I, I was saying that the human race wasn't going to die out because 1% of them would be fine. And there were enough people that they'd be fine. 100,000 people is plenty for, for maintaining the humans. Okay. okay. Thanos I'm only wanted 50%. You're going for 99% here. So... <laughs> As a, as a callback to our last episode you're welcome to go listen to it if you want um and let us know whether or not you'd be an outrider if you could choose that but back back to the flag smashers i guess like when when everybody's miserable and their loved ones are all torn away and everything's in disarray people are nicer to each other 
And I feel like I'm digressing from the point at the moment, but the concept of, of, of the snap and those five years and what the flag smashers are going for is that in times of trouble, people band together and help each other out. I gotta tell you, I'm having a hard time buying that a little bit, but it's a very sweet idea from the flag smashers. Yeah, no, I, I, well, I, we saw it happen in Outriders. We talked about uh, Outriders when uh, everyone died. Uh, they split into two camps and they just fought each other for thirty years. <laughs> so exactly. So this, so so Falcon and the Winter Soldier is is almost a, a look at you know what happens if people don't fight each other when hardship happens. They fight each other after when everything like yeah, everything just gets back to normal. Wars, then politics, and a whole lot of other stuff. <laughs> So, all right. Why well, I, I knocked I knocked Joker off track here, but oh, uh, no, the not wonderful at all. people you have to thank for creating this. And these are his notes, right? I did not do this work. This is his work. Uh, so the creator of this was Malcolm Spellman, and uh, I assume Empire is his company to go uh, with that. He, or it's is, uh, is like that was another. Empire. That's the other show that he worked on. So yeah, all those. Exactly. I guess exactly. I should have mentioned that. Those are all <laughs> the notes I wrote. Yeah, those are all things that they worked on outside of Falcon the Winter Soldier. Got it. In case anyone, most you probably won't recognize a lot of these names. These are more the the hidden gems who who make make the show happen. But you might not know what else they did. So, see when it said when it said Malcolm Spellman Empire, I was really hoping that he was just like with the Empire, and there was like a whole you know. <laughs> Star Wars. Slave and Star Wars, like I up. mean, it's all Marvel, so <laughs> everything's Marvel at this point. <laughs> oh goodness! All right, so it was directed by Carrie Skogland, which uh, that one I think people are going to recognize some of the names attached to this director. So lots of episodes of The Walking Dead, uh, The Handmaid's Tale, Punisher, and Vikings, and apparently a lot of movies that Joker didn't know because he only watches TV shows. Oh uh, well, hold on. Well. I watch a lot of movies here, just not anything that she worked on. <laughs> I'm going to have to uh, do a little bit of Googling and, and see if there's any we can shame him on for not knowing. And uh, the music by Henry Jackman. And uh, that was Kong Skull Island, Wreck-It Ralph, Big Hero Sticks, Kick-Ass, Uncharted 4, and Puss in Boots. That's, that's the best one. Right at the end that's there. The Puss in Boots. Our boy, Henry Jackman. It. Neither have I. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Strong, strong start. Strong right. start. Yep. Well, uh, so that's Falcon the Winter Soldier. We did a great job explaining it. This is Marvel. Mm -hmm. You got Everyone should know Marvel. If you don't know Marvel, that's okay. Uh, I just like you a little less. But this might be, this is a fun episode. It, if you know me at all, I am Nessa should be scared. If you were if you were already like, man, listen to the last two episodes, this John fella talks way too much. Well, strap in, because this is a Marvel show, and I go deep on Marvel, so uh I apologize in advance uh for what's about to transpire. So if you use, uh, the Outriders episode, if you haven't seen it, it was uh definitely our best episode i was very pleased with how that <laughs> went and not at all with my performance at all nessa was great but uh yeah my performance it was it was all time go watch it go listen to it go listen to mortal Kombat. uh outside of that nessa it's time for the facts section uh facts you said we, we we set we switched this up a little bit so uh -huh. we're going to start out with a bunch of rapid fire facts. So if yep. and Nessa hasn't seen these yet. So if you want to go ahead and just start reading the, from fact two. That's right. We're starting on fact two because fact two is the rapid fire. Wild. But now There's it's no fact one. Here. Oh, yeah. yeah. No rules. We're, we're Bucky style. Winter Soldier style. OK, Fact two, this is now a bunch of side facts. I hope everybody is uh, buckled in and ready for what John has found for us. Malcolm Spellman considered this show on the two-hander, so basically a buddy cop show spectrum. He cites the defiant ones on one side and ride along as the other. He wanted this to be right in the middle, so basically lethal weapon. 
That's it. That's why I was phrased. Uh, you ever seen Ride Along? That was a uh, Ice Cube and oh, Kevin Hart, Ice Cube and Kevin Hart. Wow, that's a cast. It's a good. That must have been an experience. All right, this might be. I like Ice Cube. I'm not... he as an actor. I don't think he's the greatest act in the world, but every time he's on screen, I love it. I I love every single thing he's played in. I don't know what it is about Ice Cube, but I'm a fan of him. So so I, I, the only Ice Cube movie I can think of, and I do love it because this was like the animal I was obsessed with as a child. Uh, like just knew everything. I don't remember anything about this animal anymore. I completely lost my ability, but there's a movie called Anaconda that Ice Cube. It's pretty, pretty classic. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great movie. And I had this like weird obsession with anacondas um before the term makes a lot song i had never heard it i did not <laughs> know yeah uh, no it was like a first or second grade project in school where we had to pick an animal and do like a whole poster board thing on it and that was the animal i picked and then when i saw the movie like i just loved it for the sake of of, of the animal that it was uh so that's my ice cube movie experience there I'm trying to, he played in, in oh god, what's the Mars? There, he played Mission, Mission to Mars? Oh, there was a movie he played in that it had to do with space and Mars, and it was a really good, bad movie. Like, it is yeah. entertaining enough that it's a movie you would regularly watch, and man, it's a bad movie, and it's... Uh, he was, that's the one I always remember him in. I can't re yeah, it had kind of do to do with aliens, if I re it was, um, it was a trip movie. It was good. Uh, I can't remember that mission, I, I want to say it's Mission to Mars. I, I feel that's wrong, I, though. I don't know, I, I can't help you, I am not, I'm not, maybe Ghost of Mars is, is potentially an, an option. Ghost of uh, Mars, that but, actually, I think that's yeah. it. I think it's that one. Yeah. It, it's it. a, it's a good one. I would, it's a positively reviewed, positively reviewed, or positive review. Uh, positive LLC review, copyright. Review. Yes. Yeah. Po po positive stamp. We should get one of those wax seal stamps, you know, yes. like plus on it. Yeah, we got a logo. Hey, side note, you guys, I'll, we'll post, it's, it's just concept. Uh, can you believe we had a professional logo maker do this? Yeah, I just asked from a logo from a friend who who does a lot of marketing and stuff like that, who does a lot mm -hmm. of logos, and uh, yeah. we you can I'll post it on social media. That's why you should go follow it. But yep. the live people Pod's can see it. Pod. There you it's go. just the concept. We'll we'll work it out. But it's basically <laughs> just a plus symbol, which I'm pretty sure Nessa had the idea of to begin with. Like when we started this with, plus, yeah, I want to do a plus symbol on it on an AirPod. Pod. Yeah, on an so AirPod. So pod. we could we could try out a few things, but we got that. So yeah, um, but that's our stamp. Uh, got it. Uh, LLC copyright pending, as it says. So. All right, are you ready to be hit with another fact? Hit me with more of them. These are. I mean, they're your facts. So they're you very rapid fire. Uh, yes, yeah, I wrote them. Very rapid. I spent this time forty minutes looking for facts <laughs> instead of. 20 minutes uh oh wow that's why we have double the facts okay well we've, we've we've kept everybody listening in suspense mackie turned down a load of roles after he did eight mile because everyone just wanted him to be a rapper or gangster yeah he yeah he was talking about he did a whole lot like like a lot of movies and tv shows he turned out because he just didn't want to be a rapper and a gangster he got typecasted uh, mm -hmm. and then he went to audition for a bunch of roles and his, uh, his agent was like, nah, you really shouldn't. <laughs> so even his agent didn't want him to go past what he was in eight miles. So yeah, yeah good time. But, uh, on, on that, it's kind of side note on there. I mean, he, uh, he did well. Uh, I don't, I don't think we talk about it later. No, but he, he did a good job. He apparently is it was a good choice for him getting getting the role here. Uh for the to tell you how much money he made per episode for for the show when he first played so in 
Civil War? Yeah, and Civil War was mm-hmm. the second movie he was in. We're not sure how much he made for Winter Soldier, but he got paid $100,000 to play Falcon in Civil War. Uh, and then after that, we know that for Altered Carbon, which is another show Mackie did, which is a great show, he played the main character in the second season. He got paid 475000 per episode of wow. that. That's quite so, the upgrade. And with MCU, I'm sure it's more. So I'm I'm guessing in the ballpark he was getting paid like at least half a million per episode for mm-hmm. Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So yeah, he's doing fine after the eight mile that wasn't playing a rapper or gangster. He kind of played a gangster in this for a short time. Uh oh, man, when they're in yeah. Madripoor, he acted like he was a gangster. I want to know where they got that image from. Because it was just an image of Maggie, and I, I can't I can't remember see where I saw that image before, but mm-hmm. I, I can't remember if it was for a magazine or from another show or something, but that image exists somewhere, so. All right, I continue. It was a fun scene. Okay, so. Rapid so, fire, I mean, sorry. I mean, uh, yeah, who cares? Is- it's rapid fire. <laughs> <laughs> so excited about this next fact. So, so Zemo, ooh, best part of the show, was a late add to the mix after they realized he fit in naturally. Daniel Brawl was stoked because he was upset he didn't get to wear the mask in Civil War. And he didn't in this either. But he's got some great... Time ideas. to n- nerd out here. Yes, Daniel Brawl, who... Oh, champion. He, uh... He was easily the best part of the show. I'm just, I'm throwing it out there. Zemo was easily the best character in this. I wish we got more of him. We did see him put on the mask for about 10 seconds where he went mm-hmm. uh, badass mode and he was just shooting a bunch of people. Uh, that was about it. But yeah, that was actually one of the reasons he he was really stoked to be invited back. Uh, they, he initially wasn't written in the show, but as they mm-hmm. went through... They wanted to do more with his character. They didn't know what to do. And then they realized they're like, oh, wait, he'll fit perfectly here. So they kind of he's threw him in. He's a major part of the show. Yeah. He's just thrown in. Like, yeah. Like, he's essential to the plot line. Yeah. And, and Daniel Burrell, he, as I said, he killed it as a character. He just embodied that. And uh, I got a, uh, again, you can't see it. Once again, more photos to post. I got his pop figure from falcon the winter soldier i have a pop of zemo he's wearing the mask that's why they put on the mask for 10 seconds in the show uh so that they could they could sell they could sell figurines i don't know why he didn't have the mask on more he should have requested that i think it's very much a marvel thing they like to not be wearing their mask that often a lot of times or you they want to show the actor's face and a lot of times I assumed it was the actors wanting to show their face because it's very common, you know, Tom Cruise and Will Smith are both actors who are very much, they don't like wearing anything over their face because they're, they're supposed to be the star of the show. But it sounds like he's a big fan of the comics for Zemo. So he was like, yo, give me the mask. I want it. So Think of how much easier <laughs> it is, right? If you don't have to control your facial expression. <laughs> Yeah, there's a this is going to tie into our next fact. So I'm going to read our next fact. and then. Well, hold on. We're not done. Zemo oh, dancing. We're not done. We're, I, right. You need to remind me. More time. It was uh, I've got to talk about the Zemo dancing side fact for that. Everyone knows the gift of him partying it up. They literally had him go for like 20 minutes for that, that that five second scene that they had. They just told all of them. To be, they were just, they went to a dance club and they just played music for 30 minutes and they're like, just go do whatever you think your character would do. And so Daniel Brule went off and all the other guys were kind of just hanging out. Bucky played himself where he just kind of hung out because he was like, that that's what his character would do in reality. So, yeah. Yeah. but yeah, there's, there's footage somewhere out there of Zemo actually just going nuts for 20 minutes and I, I want it. I'll, I'll pay top dollar for it. And Marvel, if you're listening, which you definitely are. G- g- send, it, give it to me. He will pay the cost to raise a child in the Andes for three days. Mm-hmm. Okay. For that footage. That's probably very inexpensive. Let's <laughs> like very inexpensive. <laughs> yeah, it's a starting offer. 
You don't want to start too high. <laughs> Got it. Go up to go up to four days. I know six six might be stretching it. Calm, calm, calm down your ass. Yeah. All right. Okay. Can we? Are you are you good with the? We're Zemo good. Man? I talked about Zemo enough. You'll hear more about him okay. later. Okay. Well, I, we'll we'll bring up Zemo again after after this fact. I have a little a little bit of insight to add. So initially, filming for this was supposed to happen in Puerto Rico, but then an earthquake hit. But Marvel was like. Let's give it a go anyway. And then another earthquake hit. Earthquake hit. So they went over to Prague, and then boom. Uh, so they continued filming after all of that blew over. Now here is the the interesting thing about this: why uh, you would actually think they might encourage more masks. So um, I heard a little bit about from from friends who've worked on sets during the pandemic. And there's all of these extra health precautions in place. And what ends up happening is you're filming a scene and your first takes you're never going to be good enough. And so you kind of film another take and then the actors are all getting in the groove and then third or fourth or fifth take, it gets really good. But after that third take, they usually have to break the set and like sanitize and fog and spray and everything. And so you never really get that fourth or fifth or sixth take in a row. And so it's like proving challenges into actors really getting into the groove and, and going along with everything. So I'd say stick the mask on everybody so that, oh, you know, you it's just easier with, to just yeah. have them in the groove and you could film faster. Yeah. Well, and uh, I thought I wrote this down and I guess I didn't. No, no I didn't. Fact? I do have another. It was a side fact. Uh, that I I'm I thought I added in, but I didn't. Maybe I I did want to talk about it. Was uh the initial storyline? So there there's a lot of talk about this. A lot of a lot of people had some feelings about the storyline with the flag smashers. The initial thing was actually supposed to be a pandemic storyline. It was going to be oh, about no. the flag smashers releasing a virus into the population. Oh, no. That's how they were going to get the world back to 50% population. So that proved a little inappropriate after they filmed a little bit in Prague and then the pandemic hit and they're like, mm, this might not work anymore. So they had to rewrite all, most of the show. And it's a large reason why I think Falcon the Winter Soldier storyline in all of it kind of the characters and stuff was the way it was and uh all positive don't get me wrong i love i love this i love this show i really did but yeah i mean i think i think if you if you critically look at this yeah there's there's some stuff and yeah that was a big problem with it so that was yeah it's perfect i can't handle that that's what happened oh my <laughs> Oh, 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 there's a comment that it should not be as funny as it is, but it kind of is because the timing is is just right. impressive. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the fancy part of Madripoor, when uh, they're in fancy Madripoor, was filmed in Atlanta, Georgia alleys. It was inspired by Mozambique and Vietnam. Uh, so, you know, those seem similar. Yeah, they're it's just Georgia and Mozambique. They're very similar places. Exactly, exactly the same, in fact. So, yeah, they didn't know where they wanted to film it. I know they initially were considering um, China and, and or, or some places in Asia. Uh, a lot of places in Asia are, are pretty gorgeous. So, mm -hmm. but then they were like, ah, there's some alleyways in Georgia. They look pretty. We'll just use that. So that was the look that they ended up going for. <laughs> I uh, I wonder if that has to do with logistics. I mean, it shouldn't. Marvel has Marvel money, so it shouldn't have to do with logistics. No. But that is where a lot of their filming happens. So yep, Georgia's easier. Georgia's film knowledge coming in here. Georgia is a uh, a very common place for a lot of filming due to how taxes and stuff are done in Georgia. They've specifically catered their state to be used for filming like they they've made a lot of changes to tax laws and stuff like that so that it's appealing for filmmakers to come and use their state as their film studio 
So the whole state, one big studio. Yeah. Well, that was rapid that was fire it. facts. Yeah. Those were those were the fun ones. Now we got the serious facts. Those as we saw how fast those will go. That that went. These ones will definitely go just as fast. So uh, I'll start out with the first one because we're getting in a little mm -hmm. deep, deep comic lore here a little bit. So the f the suit that Falcon wears at the end of the show. Uh, here's the spoiler. Guess what? He becomes Captain America. Wow! This is a surprise. Uh, it is directly pulled off from the comics. Like, if you actually look at Falcon's Captain America costume in the comics, it is very close to what it is in the show. Um, apparently the cowl, though, that you see him wear was physically impossible to make, is what the designers, they, they were like, this is physically impossible to make for filming. Like, the problem is, is if you have a cowl that's connected to your suit, when you're turning your head, it kind of, it doesn't move. It's kind of stiff and it doesn't work, right? So a lot of, a lot of his mask is actually just visual effects so that he could act properly. Um, but other characters to play Captain America in the comics include John Walker, who we saw briefly, Isaiah Bradley, who we also saw, Bucky, who was like, yo, I'm going to take that shield, though. Uh, <laughs> he also was played. Um, and John Walker, he does become U.S. agent. Isaiah Bradley was older, uh, was back in World War II after Steve kind of vanished. Bucky took up the mantle after Steve Rogers died in the Civil War storyline, but then decided it wasn't right for him, and then that's when he they gave it to... Uh, well, first it was John Walker, and then Bucky, and then Falcon. So, Frank Castle, yes, the Punisher. This is a what if yeah. series, but also in general, Frank Castle's favorite superhero is Captain America. He's always seen himself as a Captain America in his own right. So, uh, he models uh, in in a different what if alternate storyline, which they're coming out with a what if TV show. I'm really excited. We've seen Marvel Zombies. Uh, the what if no. Marvel Zombies thing. It's a good storyline. It's actually really interesting. Uh, because yeah, anyway, we I I'm gonna go off on a tangent. I'll avoid it. Uh, Samantha Wilson, mm -hmm. which is very creative. Uh, no, not related to Sam Wilson in any way or whatnot. Just alternate universe where it turns out Sam was a female instead of a male. So. Well done. Mm -hmm. But this was yep. back in the World War II uh, where Peggy Carter actually asked her to become Captain America instead of uh, in, in absence of Steve. D Daniela Cage, which is the daughter of Luke Cage and Jessica Jones. Yes, they, they, get, they get freaky and they Got end it. up having a daughter. Uh, and she becomes Cap, and she's the only one who actually gets her powers naturally. She just gets her powers because she's the daughter of Luke Cage and Jessica Jones. So, no super soldier serum. Uh, Sharon Rogers, which is... It's a choice. Uh, interesting. <laughs> it, uh, it adds a whole interesting... Everyone's been talking about it, where Sharon Carter, if you know, she's the power broker. Spoiler! Yeah. In Falcon the Winter Soldier, also the one from Civil War, which, uh, you know, Steve gets his his kissing on with and is also related to Peggy Carter. And it turns out and then he goes back in time and he ends up marrying Peggy Carter. So now there's a really weird dynamic with Sharon Carter. But anyways, point is, uh, in the comics, they actually have a daughter. And that's Sharon Rogers. She ends up taking up her father's mantle. And then Peggy Carter, which is an alternate universe where both the Doctor and Steve are killed. And then Peggy ends up becoming um, Captain America instead. So, And then here's where you get a look at the Discord messages I sent you. More photos! Woo! More photos! Uh, there's a, there's a, the photo that's used to promote the Anthony Mackie cap. It's him like standing almost sideways. It's kind of like a side view of him looking at the camera. In his outfit what with the, the Captain of the heck <laughs> is that? <laughs> I'll, uh, Did I'll... they stuff a 
hippo in a dress and put a Captain America helmet on it? Yeah, pretty much. So they, uh, I'll show these, I'll put these up on stream for people to see as well. Um, oh my gosh, if you are it's listening actually to this pulled, podcast after the fact, you absolutely must go to Twitter and see these pictures. Yeah, so they... They pulled it directly from the comic pages, pretty much, and mm -hmm. it's it's a picture of Captain America. So the Captain America one, and that's Steve Rogers' Captain America, to be precise, was, uh, this is, th so here's the image of, of Falcon, of the one that they're using to promote. As you can see, it's directly pulled from this image from the comics of and Captain America, Steve Rogers, has the biggest chest in the world. It looks so unnatural, but he he's ginormous. The dude, like, he would crush titanium and a person just by lying on top of them. So, but they used it. Uh, anyways, though, of course, as many fun people do, there were some fun editors that decided to also edit the Sam Wilson... Falcon Winter Soldier to look exactly like it, and it's hilarious. So they gave they gave Anthony Mackie a ginormous chest, and uh, it it looks it looks ridiculous. So we'll post those on social media for you to see. So. Yeah, those are are those those are a look. <laughs> That's oh poor poor Mackie. Um, but I suppose he he he's probably used to. Photoshop any any involvement right. in any Marvel IP whatsoever means everybody instantly Photoshop a billion different things. Yeah, there's a lot of memeage going on. So, all right. So fact three. This is Ness's favorite part of the podcast. My favorite. You know, I I'm I'm scanning it and I don't I don't see my fact. And don't don't worry, I'm it's concerned. there. Concerned. Okay, you'll you'll see it sort of. Yeah, it kind okay. of. Okay. Okay. All right. Well. I, I have some doubts. I have some doubts, but uh, we'll see. So it cost $150 million to make the show. Supposedly, everyone said it cost $350 million, but they're all liars and don't know how filmmaking works. Yeah, that was the rumors. Yeah. 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 They're all dumb. Okay. That's it. <laughs> Got it. Got it. We have a, a positive review of dumb people. Excellent. Uh, <laughs> with $150 million, you could buy a round-trip ticket to the moon. A 25,000 square foot mansion in Los Altos, California. See, that's one. That's 100 million. You can raise your kid in Los Altos, California in a you giant mansion. You don't to raise a kid until you have a yeah. house. Yeah, maybe. The Spider-Man roller coaster at Universal is 105 million. An Indian wedding that has a private concert by Beyonce. A bizarre showcasing local artisans. Food donation of three meals a day for four days to 5,100 people in Udipur. Accommodations at five star hotels and 100 chartered flights for guests. The dad saved some money by having the ceremony at his 27 story home in Antia, Mumbai, which is 100 million. Also, you create a new World of Warcraft, according to the Wall Street Journal, yeah. for 100 million. So, for all 21 Victoria's Secret fantasy bras from 1996 to 2015. That's the important one. Those are good. Yeah, so the Indian wedding had all that stuff 100 chartered flights. That was all that. <laughs> apparently that's what it costs to make world of warcraft initially was 100 million uh so if you want to make a replica of world of warcraft you could but of course my favorite as the one that i'm gonna do uh is yeah if you want to buy all of the victoria's secret fantasy bras from 96 to 2015 uh that cost you 142 million dollars wow all right, so. so so some people out there have some very valuable collections in their like old dresser drawers. Mm, no, <laughs> these are the, oh, I, these I'm pretty, like the ones at the at the fashion show. Yeah, they, these are the ones they Got showcase it. at the Victoria's Secret uh fashion or what do they call it? Yeah, yeah. but whatever, it's their like their showcased one. Um, I'd I'd wear those if I paid that money. I'd, I'd wear them. I feel like the point of it is to not wear them, but to each their own. Yeah. Uh, and so with 350 million, which is what all the connected, yeah, that's what all the, the system, all the smart people thought. Yeah, thought uh, you could buy Air Force One 
in the 90s it was 330 million now it's 571 million so you could buy the 90s air force one or really the beverly hillbillies mansion in la <laughs> or f-22 raptor fight jet those are those are the things you could buy for 350 million yep you could buy the beverly hillbillies mansion in la i was from that sitcom uh yeah it costs 350 million so you could go live there that's where you could raise your kid uh i mean they yeah. did raise kids ellie may clamp it yeah semi-raised uh or the yeah or you could buy an f-22 the raptor fighter jet so that's how much our military spends on a single jet so yay to constructing warplanes so and once again apparently it didn't save i wrote it uh it was where did i have where did i write it i now need to remember but i had something that you could raise you would be able to make if you with 350 million You'd be able uh -huh. to have like a fifty thousand sal fifty thousand the equivalent of fifty thousand fifty thousand dollar salary in I now Paraguay is stuck in my head, but it's not Paraguay. Something like that. But really it equated to somewhere in the grounds of like it's the equivalent of one year you would make fifty thousand US and then you if you moved it over to this one one country it mm -hmm. would equate to 350 million of of their local currency so and Got now it. i have to remember i i want to say paraguay but i, I don't think it's paraguay all um, that at all that's uh you know too too big brain for me right well that was what it was supposed to be look look <laughs> you wanted to know about the costs to raise a kid in random in, in, in a place in paraguay and there you have it uh i'll look it up i'll get back to it as we as we go up to the meaty meat section which is where we actually talk about what happens in the show yes all right well i can I oh, it can, is I paraguay can, I, can I was right wow i'll be honest i didn't realize so yeah pretty much it is paraguay it uh, it turns out yeah if you made $50,000 in the U.S. in a year, mm -hmm. right? That's your salary for a year. That's average, let's yeah. say. And you move to Paraguay. Mm -hmm. It's the equivalent of $350 million in their local currency. Got it. Got so, it. There you go. Got it. So to raise a child in Paraguay, you need 18 times the proposed budget of Falcon and the Winter Soldier in local currency of Paraguay. That's not at all complicated. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's exactly how the Japanese yen one went. So, uh, yeah. and you know what? With Paraguay, you don't even need that much for to raise a kid because with their child labor laws, you just put your kid to work. It's fine. So. Oh, yeah. This is okay. <laughs> okay, so, so got it. So on the Outriders... <laughs> podcast i'm thanos and on this one you're like nike or adidas or something <laughs> yeah coca-cola actually typically okay. <laughs> there we go <laughs> yeah saw that a whole lot they're like hey we should stop using we're we're trying we I, I can't remember what i saw it looked like an official thing from the coca-cola company saying like we're trying to fight uh our company using child labor in paraguay and i'm like if it's your company, why don't you just stop? W what? Hold up. What? What do you mean you're attempting to stop your company from? All right. Well, capitalism is one of the things that the flag smashers hate, essentially. Uh, oh, tie in. Yeah, yeah. Look at that segue. So. As we jump into the actual meat of this, now that we're through all of the really fun facts that, that give you a very bizarre look at, uh, at this six show series, um, what essentially happens is the snap is undone and all of these people come back and- I put, I gave it a years. name. I gave it a name. You gave it a name. The Snapter Math. The Snapter Math. Oh my gosh. Uh, uh, okay. In the snap, no, I'm not giving the satisfaction. Yeah. In the snaptermath, 
Uh, so all these people have moved on. The you know the the, the borders were basically dissolved. Everybody kind of worked together to make things work. Houses changed ownership. People met new spouses and started new lives. And then everybody's back and you have to go back the way it was. And there is, what is it? It's the relocation something. Why can't I remember the acronym? Um, some I don't relocation remember either. Zero. Yeah. It's trying to put all the country borders back. And, you know, they have these refugee camps that all this money is supposed to be going to stock, but it's not really stocking them. And there's all these problems. And so the Flag Smashers essentially steal some superhuman serum from the power broker. And there's like 12 different storylines for this, by the way. It's actually really cool to follow all of them. Yeah. But and the power broker gave them the super soldier to use them as their personal bodyguards. Yeah. Well, I thought they they like sort of stole it by not doing <clears throat> what the power broker wanted. Right. Well, yeah. they were initially given it, and that's how they got their powers, but then they <laughs> stole a bunch to make their own army. Yeah. And uh and so that's one side of things. And then the flip side on the other side of the world is that Captain America is gone and he has given his shield to Sam and Sam doesn't want the responsibility, the legacy, he's got all his own problems, he's kind of jaded, and he, he hands it off and he says, no, you know, the shield needs to be retired and stuck in a museum, and the government screws him over and picks a new Captain America. And so Sam has to go all Falcon and try and fix the world and go after the Flag Smashers and everything. And so there's the Flag Smashers, there's the Power Broker, there's Zima, who is just hates super soldiers, there's Falcon, Bucky's kind of working with Falcon, and then there's Captain America and the U.S. government that doesn't want Falcon or Bucky to be doing anything, but they're kind of incompetent on their own, and it's this whole, it's, it's very complicated. I, what I was impressed with is I love it when there's a lot of storylines like that, and I hate when they feel far too unresolved, like that they've bitten off more than they could chew. Right. And I thought that this did a great job of having several different interests and weaving them together in a way that made sense. And while I don't think we'll see another season of WandaVision, Falcon and the Winter Soldier left like three or four really clear threads hanging. But it didn't, if they didn't make a second season, I wouldn't be upset with it because they did a decent job resolving what existed. But they also left a nice opening for more. Yeah, they. I would love... We already know we're getting Captain America 4, which is Falcon now. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Excuse me. Um, so yeah, he's now officially Captain America. We had a lot with Zemo and the Flag Smashers. They're still, they're still out there. I want to I wanna list. There's got to be a list of all the unresolved or like left out their storylines of Marvel. Because there's a lot. There's a lot that they've sure. teased in other shows and movies and stuff that they haven't utilized yet. And we're just waiting for them to start approaching it. Uh, the ending for this one, for me, was a little confusing by the one fact that they had, they had a phrase that said, like, oh, the Flag Smashers are still, still alive and kicking. Um, mm -hmm. because when they got put into an armored truck, spoilers, the, the rest of the super soldier flag smashers got put into an armored truck and then they used their phrase the the guy who put them in there used the, the, their motto, which is one world, one people. Uh, but then the truck blows up because Zemo said, got his butler, great character, by the way, yeah. got his butler to rig yeah. the truck and it blew up. So I was like, wait, you, anyways, they, yeah, they, I'll definitely say they resolved stories at times. <laughs> sure um but there's a lot going on i would love on top of captain america the next one i would still love to see another falcon winter soldier season i'm also excited to see what they're gonna do with u.s agent he's a really cool character uh that's jo the biggest one i think they left yeah. open that yeah. seems like the clearest next step because who's that woman that talks to him and you know what is his role gonna be and valentina also, allegra de fontaine you mean yeah that one can we also discuss how does he have a wife i don't like I, it doesn't fit in the storyline that he's married at all 
Why? It didn't. He's a he's a military guy. He's been in the military for like years at this point, right? Yeah. But he's just he was just he a does, U.S. soldier. Like, yeah, but he seems very like all in and and you know like when, oh when he's all in his work. Her? When did he? I have mean, time? you know where did I can't from? I can't speak. I don't. I'm I, you know I don't have, come from a military family or anything like that. But I feel that's a pretty common thread for a lot of military wives and husbands, right? Is they're they're very used to their significant other just being gone for long long stretches of time but i do agree I he just, he seems to be an extreme personality wise, yeah, yeah fair like enough that's, it didn't i was so surprised well, he, like, he was he, he was a little up. flip floppy he was all angry and then not angry and then angry again and then not angry and then super super angry and then he became super not angry so he was a little flip floppy yeah, so, but uh so yeah. wyatt russell the actor that played him right. must have just had you know, the director sat there with a little flashcard and was like, neutral, super angry, angry. <laughs> it's very angry. Yeah. It just, you know, like had, 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 I'm imagining one of those temperature scales. He just moves the little bar up and down it to, to, to gauge, you know, what he had to be in that scene. And I, I really like Wyatt Russell, I think was a, he's, I mean, he's an important part of the show, but I think he was one of the biggest, I loved the way he, they did his character. I mean, it's one of those. You come in like Steve is my is my Captain America. Chris Evans, you're gonna replace it with this other white dude? Come on now. Okay. <laughs> I like and you want to hate the guy, but when you first meet him, you're like, wow, this dude's actually kind of a nice dude. Like you don't want to hate him. He seems and then he kind of does a few things where you're like, okay, hold up. Hold up. He's now leaving out some weird there's some interesting facts here. But I think it's a great um He's the exact character that, who, oh my god, I'm forgetting his name. Who was the guy who played in Men in Black? Who? What was the dude's name? Will uh, Smith. The other guy that's not Will Smith. Uh, Tommy Lee Jones. Tommy Lee Jones. Thank you. He Wyatt Russell is the exact person that Tommy Lee Jones. If you remember the very first Captain America, first Avenger, uh, Tommy Lee Jones was the uh drill sergeant there and th he was the one helping decide who was going to be part of the super soldier who was going to get the super soldier serum and he didn't want steve rogers at all he hated steve rogers wyatt russell would be the guy that he pushed to be the super soldier yeah. so that's and that's exactly what we got and i i love that that's how they kind of did his character up is that he was what tommy lee jones would have picked uh and we saw that and they did a lot with the super soldier serum of how it really just accentuates your personality. It doesn't, mm -hmm. it makes you stronger physically, but also psychologically and everything like that. And I think they did a good job of kind of twisting his character in that form. Uh, once he, once he takes the, the serum. So it'll be fun. He's now us agent. As I said, I, I, I think Wyatt Russell did a good job and I'm excited to see him more because he, he was a character that I did. I liked throughout it and then didn't like at other points. Um, in the comics wise, he, really, he's a character that exists and he does a bunch of stuff to frame Captain America as a bad guy. So they're, they're actually at the same time going on with Steve Rogers. And he's just he has his four dudes. He's got Battlestar and his two goons. Uh, and the two goons will basically set up a bunch of robberies and stuff and make Captain America look bad. And then Wyatt Russell would come in or, or sorry, John Walker would come in and save the day. But then I those two it. goons end up betraying him and Battlestar. So I wish they, they'd utilize Battlestar a little more. It would have been good to see, but there was a good comparison. I mean, they, they, they did the direct comparison where they're like, look at Sam and Bucky and then mm -hmm. Battlestar and new cat. Right. So, yeah. um, they did a good job with that. Uh, another character you, that. Uh, oh wait, wait! I was going to ask. Okay. So do you? I have. I have a different opinion of this. This John Walker because you okay. said you liked him some of the time. It couldn't stand the others. To me, he was Umbridge. Like, uh, like when you read the okay. big Harry Potter right. book or you watch the movie, like you just hate them so thoroughly. You just want to punch their face off. Well, I agree. I mean, I didn't I feel that, that immediately. Oh, no. The entire time, the way he stood, the way he, like, jutted his chin out. It was there's everything about posture and manners and everything. I just 
wanted to rip him to shreds. Right, but when you first introduce him, he's talking to his wife in a locker room and he's really nervous yeah. and you're like, oh, look yeah. at this. Look at this cute little, no. he, look at the cute little man. He's no. having his struggle. He's like, oh, he, he understands that Captain America's, he gets it. You can see it though. I, I really, I thought, and this is the thing, like this isn't, this isn't, I hated the actor. This was, the character was so well done that yeah. in those moments, I still felt this radiating um, entitlement from Ooh. him. Right. That, it, I think that did. That when, okay. It did come through a little yeah. bit. I mean, he felt yeah. like he did deserve the mantle, which I, he put in the work for it. Sure. But Captain America is more than just putting in work, right? It's not a job that you yeah. just work for. Um, when it's not an accolade that no. you climb your way up to, you know, the, the, the humbleness is an important aspect of the character. And so I just thought it was really impressive because of the moment you first see him, you know that he's wrong. You know that he's not Steve Rogers. And there's just little things that they did. And the other thing that they did is the helmet that he wore. I swear that they intentionally designed it to make him look stupid. Because it is not... <laughs> like, it's, like, it's not complimentary. And then, in no world would they do that if he wasn't supposed to be a negative. You know, like main right. <laughs> they do every single thing possible to make them look good. And they made him look stupid with that helmet. And that was an intentional choice. And the whole time you're so annoyed by it. But it's like a really, really smart choice because it's that full immersive experience for the viewer. How annoying this person is and how wrong they are for the role. Because their attitude doesn't fit the Steve Rogers. They don't even look the same way in the suit. Like there's so many things. Because when, when Sam shows up and he's Captain America, you bet he gets a suit he looks awesome in that accentuates everything about him. Like, of course, that's what they do. He doesn't I, get that. Doesn't I love think. the introduction of him. He flies to that window and then people are like, who are you? He's just like, I'm Captain America. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, sure. Sounds good, man. <laughs> like, all right, yeah, I guess that sounds good to me. He's just decided. <laughs> uh, I, I love that decision. It was... It was good how they, they did introduce... Uh, I mean, those scenes were great, by the way. Just those action yeah. scenes in general. Um, I do... To go on... I mean, everyone talks about the, the relationship between Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Stan. We all know that they're great on screen. They're, they're great off screen. If you've watched any interviews with them ever, they've never... I don't think I've ever heard them say one nice thing about each other, ever. But in the, like... He's my best friend, so I get to pick on him as much as I want yeah. kind of way. Uh, they have amazing chemistry on screen, and it seems like they really are best of buds, like, off screen. So uh, I think it works. And outside of that, that's what everyone talks about. I do hope that in Falcon the Winter Soldier and stuff, the one, one thing I felt like we missed out on is I would have loved to see that Avengers, the, the first Avengers battle uh, like battle together where they 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 truly sync up i feel we never really saw them truly sync up i think the closest one we got was them on the truck fighting a little bit but even at the ending they were split up most of the time you know falcon yeah. was in the air bucky was on a bike uh and then they split up we never got that i always remember the scene of where all the avengers are fighting on the bridge or on the highway and then Without even saying anything, like, Iron Man shoots a, a beam at Captain America and he blocks it with his shield and, like, deflects it into all the enemies, like, uh, all, yeah, all the Jatari. We never got anything like that where we saw them really sync up. Oh, I, gu I guess we did see it a little bit with uh, when they were fighting John Walker. We saw them a little bit work together. It, or very much the... The scene at the end of Civil War where Bucky and Steve are fighting Iron Man and they're like tossing the shield to each other and beating up Iron Man really heavy. We never got that from this at the ending, which was I felt was a missed opportunity. Uh, so but I really hope we see that kind of cooperation come out in uh, the Captain Cap 4. So. Uh, yeah. that's one thing I felt, but yeah, uh, I think everyone can agree that they're great on screen together. Um, 
we saw Aaron Kellyman and Desmond Chaim, uh, who is Dovovich, and Carly Morgenthau. Those are the two. So, you know, the kind of the main antagonists of the film. And then Dovovich was the guy who was her second in command, sort of. Mm -hmm. Not the guy who was killed, but uh, the Asian Asian guy. I don't, I don't know how else Wait. to say other than him. So... Would you say that the Flag Smashers are the main antagonists? Or would you say the U.S. government and John Walker? Are that's, the main that's, I think that's why this show's great, is they did. They had all different, like you said, they have all these different moving parts and all of them. I mean, they're all, the U.S. government was done up. The point of the show, I mean, Marvel tried to do this very socio political show. That's what they said they wanted to do with this to begin with. Mm -hmm. they tried at times for sure um i have some i have i a lot of opinions on isaiah bradley's character and which again isaiah bradley as the character was great but how they ended his character and some i, I got opinions on that but um they really much did it up where Fal falcon's speech at the end of the show um was hey look nobody is a hero in this scenario right yeah. like everybody he's like look i saved some people but i'm not a hero i got my own issues and stuff to deal with carly had is just trying to show some issues and and no one's ever asking why she's trying to be a terrorist or uh and it was very much like look the u.s government is doing some bad stuff u.s agent uh new cap is doing some bad stuff Valentina Allegra de Fontaine, she doing some some creepy stuff. Sharon Carter, she doing some bad stuff. Zemo, he's doing he's blowing people up uh, and and murdering people. Everybody's doing bad things. No no one is propped up as a hero in hey, this storyline. So the Dora, what is it? Dora Milaje, Milaje? Yeah, Dora Milaje. Dora Milaje. Those those ones. Those, they, they were they were doing some great stuff. We were on board. They were also doing some bad. Like Zemo was a prisoner of the U.S. government, and they're like, "He's ours now. Give him to us." So it very much, uh, I think about it as the Mission Impossible. If you saw the the latest, the Fallout, they that's what happened with the the antagonist, antagonist there is that the British government was sent to kill him because he had too many secrets. So instead, the U.S. government just gave him over at the end of, of the show, because they're like, well, we don't need him anymore. You, you can have him. That's kind of what I saw with Zemos. They were just like, like, what? Does the U.S. No, government even know he's gone? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, they, they didn't exactly, it's not like the government straight up gave him to Wanda. Yeah, they broke him out. Wanda was just like, <laughs> he's out, so he's ours now. Yeah. But that's another storyline that, so Bucky is, he's well, they took him to the raft. Specifically. They did yeah. take him to the raft, which is technically a U.S. run facility. But anyways. So Bucky is not technically the White Wolf, but they, but he could be the White Wolf. Like, like, I think the White Wolf comic series was really short and a little ambiguous. And I believe that the Dormilogy call him the White Wolf in the show because yeah. the White Wolf is like someone that they, they rescue and they train and they do stuff with and so it could be Bucky and so he sort of steps into that role and takes it and that's going to be really interesting to see what role he's going to play in any Wakanda linked stories because they have definitely had that thread running through a few different things because it was the post credits scene in one of the Captain Americas, I think, is that Bucky is in a tent and Black Panther's little sister is taking care of him. Yeah, well, they, time. well, yeah, because they, they gave him over to Wakanda because they, I mean, they showed yeah. in this is they were removing all of the, everything the Russians put into his head, right? So that's what he's been, hang he was hanging out in Wakanda until uh, Infinity War where he was kind of just being a, 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 it looked like a farmer almost, you know, he was just kind of hanging out in Wakanda. So I, I like his tie in with Wakanda. And I think, I think he definitely, we, we could see more of him tied in there too, when we get more like Black Panther too and stuff like that. So 
which is announced and is coming. And I believe they said that they're going to have a way that, you know, current Black Panther dies and the new one rises rather than just recasting the role. Right. Yeah. Secret. Everyone's predicting Shuri. I really hope. All right. This is, I'm side tangent, small one. But I really hope they don't make Shuri new Black Panther. I'm going to be 100% honest. Yeah. She does become Black Panther in the comics, I will say. But I love her character. Like, I love her character, so who she is right now. And I feel it would suck to lose that character in favor of just making her Black Panther instead. Because I, she's the new tech genius. Like, ever since Iron Man, you know, Iron Man made... so. It was just one of those they never really explain in the in the the movies, but they just the idea is oh uh, Tony Stark made all the suits for everybody. He just mm -hmm. he 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 did everything for everybody. It's fine. It does it make sense? Sure, we'll just say it is. But now that he's gone, who's making all the suits for people? And it's the it, Shuri. I mean, there is now the concept is she's the tech genius, uh, who in the MCU, by the way, they have said that she is the smartest character in the mcu uh smarter than tony stark smarter than bruce banner so um yeah and so she's she's that and i like her character as the tech genius and as i said i i don't want to see her just become black panther just because they need to fill that role i kind of i i think they are going to go that route but that's that's my personal opinion i i like her as um I again, I th I think they not a Okoye. Uh, who was who was the one that Black Panther was kind of dating in the first Black Panther movie? I don't remember who oh, that was, the, but the, the woman, right? Yeah, yeah, they could make her uh, Black Panther, or something like that. So I I don't know. There, I don't know if there's a good choice necessarily, and that's why I think Shuri is set up to be the best choice. But it for me, it'll be a shame that we get to see her character as Shuri uh kind of mm -hmm. disappear so yeah um, i think you lose a lot of the like the the, the sassy uh yeah. back and forth but yeah but yeah that's what that's what i think is going to happen with if we spin this out and look at the impact on the rest of the mcu i think that we're going to see bucky show up in wakanda related things and i would like to see bucky get a larger and larger role i think his character's awesome i think it's fun to watch and i think that marvel characters tend to be too one dimensional um and when time, they yeah. try to yeah when they try to add conflict into them it doesn't work particularly well like with tony don't they just make him a drunk or something and it's it's not this you don't feel a lot of pity for him. It's not this compelling, um, complicated story. And you can't just kill people's parents every single time, all right? <laughs> that is over. Well, that's a staple of the, the hero. You gotta. <laughs> uh, so I think that, like, I think that Bucky has some of the best complications right. in his backstory that make him this deeper character. Yeah. And I'd like to see it, him explored more. And it's why, again, it's why he doesn't feel fit to be Captain America is, is because he, he's dealing with his own stuff. And it's why Sam, I mean, again, from the beginning, Sam has been slowly becoming the role of, of Captain America without him realizing it. Um, and yeah, I mean, he doesn't have a tragic backstory necessarily. Like, uh, it, I wanted to, there, there was a small, small little fact is that uh in the MCU, Falcon is from Louisiana. I mean, that's where he is for some of the show with his sister and stuff like that. Uh, that's technically not what it is in the comics, actually. I think he's from New York or something along those lines. I can't remember where. But um, Anthony Mackie is from Louisiana. So they actually made the origin the same so that Anthony Mackie would feel a deeper connection to the character, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, and uh, oh, a side, another side thing. You know the guy who played Isaiah Bradley? I was trying to figure out where he was from. He was from Supergirl, which I know you're a fan of. Yes. He's the, the father of, of John Jones, of Martian Manhunter. Mm -hmm. I just, uh, mm -hmm. anyways, so I know. I, I know <laughs> Nessa likes Supergirl as much as I, I do. I so. love Supergirl. Yeah. I love it. I love it. We could have a, a separate one about that. That was, and when you know, and the, the, we can the do guy that. Yeah. from Supergirl was in the Mortal Kombat movie. Yeah, that's why yeah. I thought it was funny. That's so, you know, we got two episodes in a row that uh, that tie over. Yeah, um, so okay. on top on top of what we're going to see in MCU, we could get another Falcon, by the way. 
I don't know if you know this. Oh. This was something I mentioned. Uh, side note that I hid from you a little bit, but Danny Ramirez, who played Joaquin Torres, which is Sam's military mm-hmm. buddy, the guy gets beat yep. up at the beginning, and, and he's kind of... He, in the comics, actually becomes the next Falcon after Falcon Ooh. becomes Captain America. Not a lot of people know that, but yeah, I mean, we saw him... At the beginning, he was trying to help Sam fix his wingsuit. Uh, mm-hmm. And then when the wings broke off, when John Walker ripped the, he left it to him. He's like, hey, you forgot your wings. He's like, nah, you keep them. So yeah. we might see him come back and be, a- again, one of those storylines that they've kind of just left out <laughs> in the open. Uh, we might actually see him become the new Falcon. So, And it might be 10 years before they collect on That's it. Very true. I've seen... <laughs> Very interesting. Usually it's on TikTok where they're like, hey, so you know this scene in this movie that just came out? Let's go back 15 years to this one random tweet reference interaction thing and that they planned for forever ago. So the the story webs at Marvel have to be so, yeah. so complex. Well, another another good web is Julia Louise's Dry- Dreyfus character, uh, which is, well, we once again, my favorite, there. my favorite name, Valentina Allegra Day. Fontaine. What a great name. Yeah. Uh I love to... by the way, she played that perfectly. Like the way that she played that character was so beyond perfect. Uh it, it felt like she was pulled directly from the, the comics. It's exactly how her character acts in the comics. Amazing job. We were supposed to initially see her in the Black Widow movie, which was supposed to come out before this. So we will see her in the Black Widow movie coming out. Uh, and overall, yeah, she's just kind of this sketchy government figure who does this kind of stuff, like giving... She, she's the one who initially gives John Walker the, the super soldier serum in the comics, uh, mm-hmm. but now just made him U.S. agent. I think she's going to play a really big role in this going forward. I think we're going to see more of her, which I'm excited about. It was kind of like Martin Freeman's character. We saw him in Civil War. He was the one who was kind of interrogating uh bucky when they came in and he was he came popped up a little bit but then he had his own character role in the first black panther right so uh there's a good choice good chance we're going to see a a big big part of her coming forward that she's going to represent the government i think she's replacing uh, general what's it not rose i want to say rosewood but it's not rosewood the the general figure who we saw with Tony Stark all the time, who was in technically the yeah. Incredible Hulk, who we see at like the end of it. I think she's going to be kind of the replacement for his character. I don't think we're going to see him too much and we're going to start seeing her more. So I think that Sharon Carter and Valentina. Right. Yes. Are going Power to become, broker. Mm-hmm. They're 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 going to be the puppet masters that neither of them are painted as all the way bad or all the way good right right they're they're very we don't know what's gonna happen with either of them and i think they're gonna become the two big players because we we need something new to be causing problems right let me just loki cannot be the only one who causes problems we need (laughs) a new problem causer other than loki it's true, that yeah. Played out. <laughs> well, we got Wanda. She'd be causing problems. I feel like Wanda is gonna be on the Avenger good side. I don't think that she's. I hope be they make the her a villain. I really hope they do. I think it would be she'd be the greatest Marvel villain, other, up up there with Loki. I think if they, although Loki's now becoming the greatest Marvel hero in reality of just the, his story progression. Every it's been so good. And I think they could do the same with Wanda. I think would be sick, but I don't think they're going to because mainly Marvel doesn't have that big of a good female hero cast right now. They're working on that. Yeah. We are getting Miss Marvel and other stuff. So I don't I don't knock Marvel for that at all. They are getting a bigger cast. So maybe we'll see her go evil. But for now, I don't yeah. think they want to give up the amount of female any female hero mm-hmm. right now. I, I think that the way that WandaVision ended, she's one vision was her being evil right and i think that was her villain arc before she joins the avengers as fully helpful is what i expect to see yeah 
I can, but I can see it. We have not talked about my favorite scene. Okay. My favorite scene, the best, the best part of the whole show. It's not Zemo dancing. It's it's not Zemo dancing. All right. It's it's not. It's not a good it scene, has then. to do it has to do with the other gif that I have. Uh, so when uh, when when Zima is out and the Dora Milaje catch up with Bucky and are like, you need to give us Zima. And they're in, and then it's a little bit later, and they're in that really fancy, like, library mansion area. Right. And, Which is one of Zemo's places. Yeah. Because he just has and, a million all over the world. He's, yeah, a, he's a baron. That's what villains work. He's a helmet baron Zemo, so he's yeah, rich. Yeah, and uh, they, all, they all fight. And... So John yeah. Walker doesn't have the super serum. Sam doesn't have the super serum. Bucky has a super serum, but he gets his butt kicked. Yeah. Like, he just gets absolutely destroyed. His arm falls by... off. The... Yeah, it's so funny. Just... Did you know it could do that? I love the reaction to all that. Like, they did such a good job because he really was like, what the heck just happened? All of them just yeah. stood there like, wow, that was insane. It's like, I didn't. No, it did. Oh, all right. They went. I loved that scene. I loved what it did for plot development with um, making the Winter Soldier a little weak to certain things. I think that sets it up well for this, like, antagonistic, like, you know, poorly misbehaving puppy relationship. Very much. Oh, I, with Wakanda? Because it, he was. He yeah. was done up like... I think I think part of that reaction that you saw in his face was not only just a surprise of what just happened, but a realization that even though the Wakan, even though he's considered a hero and he's got his own issues with all the the pain he's caused, and Wakanda worked with him and took care of him for years potentially here to uh, get rid of all the stuff that Ru the Russians put in his head. Oh, uh, or, well, Hydra put in his head, really. He, even after all that, and they freed him, and they gave him a robot arm, they still didn't trust him. They still didn't, tr like, they had a safety in place that if they ever needed to take him out, they could. And I think that was that, a big realization for him, is that even though he was quote-unquote cured, they still didn't know if he was a good guy. So. Yeah. And, I mean, it's just funny. And then it, it puts John walker into the spiral which of... first off let's just i i love that i love that for two reasons one it's so ridiculous because it's the most american thing to think mm -hmm. like wow we just got our ass handed to us by non-super soldiers wow we're not that that's that's crazy and ridiculous and i need a super soldier we, serum because yeah. that's that's so uncool and i'm like bro you are in you are an american man trained in america these people are ancient. These are warriors from an ancient civilization who have been trained from like prehistoric war arts for decades. And you think you can match up against these warrior women? Nice. That is the most American thing you could possibly think. Okay. You didn't stand a chance even with the super soldier serum. Let's be real. Bucky didn't. It's just kind of like why that's the thing. It's another it's another amazing note in his character development of you saw another super soldier get destroyed. And you think just because you carry the shield, you sh deserve to win every fight. You're a good and fighter. You're having, <laughs> yeah, you're having a major breakdown because a hunk of metal didn't turn you into an elite fighting machine. Yeah. And it's I mean, it was a brilliant scene. That was my favorite fight scene. I know that the end fight scene when they're all working together and all the different stuff going on, they were like, Ooh. it was a, I actually, I think it was the weakest scene out of, out of the three. I think the opening scene was one of the coolest Marvel has done in general with mm -hmm. Sam flying you through the canyon and the, the helicopters and everything going on there was, was so cool. Such yeah. a cool scene. Uh, same thing with, like you said, that th there wasn't a lot of action. It was interesting because there wasn't a crazy amount of action in this, which wasn't a bad thing necessarily. I think actually my favorite episode was that fifth episode where they were just hanging out in Louisiana, fixing up Sam's boat. 
I think that was my favorite episode of the whole whole thing. Lots of story, lots of fun. rich characters, development and, and whatnot. And so, yeah, I was a fan, the but push the bunny they, uh, side of things. Yeah, I, I did. I did like the final action scene. They started to show off some of of his new suits, little powers where before I think there was I can't remember where it was, where if he hit water with his um, falcon suit, he it, it was bad for him. Right. But in this one, he's just cut, literally cutting the water with his, <laughs> his vibranium wings. I think, it, again, a lot of that, that kind of helps with the fact that he's not a super soldier. In the comics, he, I believe he does get the super soldier serum, if I remember. But in this one, he's specifically not becoming a super soldier. So it's like, okay, cool. But how do you fight super soldiers and guns and just everything if you're just a person? And then the solution is... Ah, uh, he's vib he's got a vibranium suit now. He's got a Black Panther esque uh, super suit, which I think is awesome. So, but yeah, yeah the, the action the suit was great. action yeah. was great. I mean, they they didn't have a lot with it, but when they did have action scenes, they did a, an amazing job with it. So, I like that they didn't try and pack too many in. the The fights felt important. Yeah, yeah. The fights were what they were supposed to be. It was great. We enjoyed them. Positively reviewed fights. Positively reviewed. Positive review. Positively reviewed. Positive review. So, all right. Uh, we've been going for quite a while. I think. I think as much as I want to keep talking, let's uh, let's push it to the ending because <laughs> I think it. I think it's that time. Uh, <laughs> we uh, we still we didn't even talk about the legacy with the cut. Well, we talked a little bit about the comics and the vision that point is everything was great they did a great job relating to the comics and uh i love love the vision of uh the director and the creator for this and i hope we get more of it i want another season uh cap captain america 4 is by the same writers we'll see how that is uh hopefully now that they have more time and they won't have to rewrite a large part of the story because hopefully they don't do a pandemic thing we, we might some of the some of the the lower lower uh points might might be changed uh but overall let, let well let me pose a a final question to you before we 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 close it out a little bit here if you were mm -hmm. we know now that sam has become captain america but let's say sam decided he didn't want to become captain america and bucky you know he doesn't want to be either who would you make the new Captain America in your in your your eyes, who who would be the next perfect Captain America? It doesn't have to be Marvel Universe either. You could choose anybody. Outside or inside of the MCU Marvel or yeah. I have to give like a real answer, not like Aquaman. Because it'd be <laughs> if you want to say Aquaman, sure. I mean, it would be entertaining. Um. John Jones. Okay. Which is not from the Marvel Universe. No. Mar John Jones, again, if you don't recognize the name, is Martian Manhunter from DC. Uh, yeah. He's part of the Justice I League feel... and all that. So, which I, he's yeah. my favorite. He's one of my favorite characters in DC. So I love, love John Jones. I think Jones, he's great. So. I feel like his sense of patriotism, despite being from Mars, which is what Captain America is supposed to be all about, is significantly higher and like the sense of honor and loyalty and sacrifice. I feel like he has some of the purest, you know, ways that he, he does things. The only uh, issue with him being a Captain America is he's very much, I've always seen him as like an elder and an advisory <laughs> type sure. thing. Because that's what he plays in Supergirl. The, the like, that's what I'm used to. Yeah, the wisdom character. I see. So that's, uh, that could work he's as a Captain good. America, you know? Yeah. He's teaching little Falcon what he should be doing, <laughs> what he shouldn't. I don't mind it. I'm going to go with a uh, slightly change. I'm going to go with someone that I think the U.S. government would pick. Uh-huh. Doom guy. Dude, who is Doom guy? The, the character from Doom. The video like, game like 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 do it got it doom return got it got like it doom guy. okay they would pick that just because uh, do, i mean we're talking like punisher frank castle level 
of just you know, murder and blood and everything, but he's uh, Captain America. And that's who the U.S. government would pick. Would he be a great Captain America? Absolutely not. Would I love to see crazy Captain America and crazy angry Captain America? Even angrier than John Walker? Absolutely, I'm in. So that's who I'm picking. Maybe we can meet in the middle and go for Cyclops from X-Men. Cyclops would work. I think he would make a good good Captain America. Um, and I think the government might pick him. In a world where the government doesn't hate mutants. Yeah, I was going to say, don't, the no government kind of hate mutants in general, though. But, so. but, but if you go into the Marvel like cinematic we go mcu the government clearly doesn't it's only in this like x-men microcosm where they're really anti-powers gotcha so you, you pull cyclops out of x-men and right in marvel where they're like yeah powers are fine whatever it's just another another yeah. ordinary day yeah. sure for sure which is weird because they're both marvel but like mcu versus x-men are handled very differently yeah all right, what's your overall feeling? How you liking this? What's your what's your rating? How you like it? I mean, Falcon Winter Soldier is the greatest piece of content we've ever received in our entire of lives. Course. Until next week, absolute great. But uh, what's the rating? What do you rate this? Uh, well, I think I'm gonna have to go with one Beverly Hillbilly Mansion, okay. and assume that's the cost to raise an Ellie Mae Clampett. So that's <laughs> that's my rating. Um, so Captain America is probably my least favorite marvel anything okay. i fall asleep hey positive movies as the least favorite that's <laughs> no, not positive no, 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 we're going there we're getting there we're getting there all right i i fall asleep during the movies i have a hard time with it i really enjoyed this show i could actually get into it i was invested the characters were real and were human the conflicts were not black and white which is the struggle you can fall into with Captain America is the time that it was written, the way the character is designed. It's kind of like Superman. There is, There are two sides, and it's very clear what's happening on each of them. And this I really enjoyed because everything was muddied. Everything was unclear. Everybody had intentions and motivations you could understand and get behind. And I liked that. The execution on all of it, not always amazing, but I liked what they were trying to do, and I felt like I could be invested in the show. So they get a Beverly Hills Mansion for my rating. You get Beverly Hillbillies Mansion. That's the rating. Uh, I'll go with one round trip to the moon. That's that's the, okay. the rating of uh, I'm going to give this. Uh, yeah, and I, I mean, I'll tell you that I'm a big fan so my two favorite characters, I'm the only Hawkeye fan in the world. Hawkeye is my favorite Marvel MCU character, mainly because his comic, Hawkeye Ronan, so cool. He's such, he's just, he's just a badass, right? He's a ninja badass. So I'm the only Hawkeye fan in the world, of course. But Falcon, mm -hmm. Falcon's always been my, like, my second favorite character. I love his suit. I love his character. I love Anthony Mackie. All around, I love all the characters. I love all of it. So I... I was excited when, when as soon as Endgame happened and we knew that Chris Evans was leaving, I was like, yeah, they're going to give it to, to <laughs> Sam, and I'm excited to get new Captain America. I think it's going to be really cool seeing him. It'll be interesting because they changed his character quite a bit from... They kept a lot of the things the same, but actually for this show, they changed some of his... The way he handles like problems and stuff was kind of different from where he did, and he was much more militaristic in the other ones whereas he wasn't as much in this one he really sat back and thought about it so it'll be interesting because him being captain america means he's the leader of the avengers now right is that kind of how that works so him leading <laughs> leading the avengers we'll see how it goes uh i think i i think I, I think sam as the character is gonna be great for it actually so we'll see how it goes we'll see what ends up happening in cap four um as well as avengers and stuff going forward it's gonna be really cool because we have almost none of the original superhero Avengers mm -hmm. in the show anymore. So now that Marvel's getting rolling, we're getting what if the Modoc series comes out next week on Hulu. We got we got uh, again. What if is going to be a great series? 
uh, Doctor Strange, Black Widow, Miss Marvel, Eternals, Spider Man. There's a lot. New Blade. Oh God, I'm so ready for my her my her my her my Mahershala Ali coming in to oh, play Blade. Coherent. Um, mm -hmm. I'm so ready for that one. But yeah, I'm I'm just saying I'm a big Marvel head. I'm sure you could tell by how long this episode is. This will probably be our longest episode. I don't think there's going to be a lot I cut out like the Outriders episode, which uh, we don't talk about anyways. Uh, the Outriders episode was great. You'll totally enjoy it. You'll, lo you'll love it. It was, it was awesome. our best episode, for sure. Yeah. I, well, no, this I did a great job. This episode is the best episode. Falcon and the Winter Soldier is the best ever. It's true. Ever. This is Until our next best. week. In, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's how that works. But as we said, we had, there are two other podcasts out. It's a pretty much brand new podcast. We've done three episodes so far, you know, now that this one is out, if you're out there listening to it. Uh, so you can check out those other episodes, our social media, leave comments and reviews. You would be surprised at how much those things help get into algorithms so other people can find awesome content like this. Pause reviewed pod, P O S reviewed P O D, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Podbean, Spotify, Apple, all of those wonderful sites. That's where you're going to be able to find us, interact, see all the pictures and the videos that we post, and uh, check out the other episodes, leave reviews and comments, all of those lovely, wonderful things. We super appreciate it. Yep. Tell us who you would pick to be the next Captain America. Yeah, Black that's Panther. true. Yeah, who do you? Uh, yeah, who do you guys think should be the next next Captain America if it wasn't Sam? So. But yeah, rate us 12 stars out of five uh, on whatever whatever device it is. And then just comment. Even if you just say hello, uh, all that stuff actually, it, it really does. Like she said, it deeply helps uh, get this podcast out to more people. So, and we want to keep making it. So next episode, here's the, here's the big tease to keep you interested for the next one. You ready? Uh, we haven't talked about it yet. So uh, there's definitely going to be another episode and we definitely know what it is. Uh, so stay tuned for it because you'll be excited when it I'll tell you it starts with a letter from the middle of the alphabet. I hope. We're gonna find I'm gonna find something that starts with a number just to make oh. John a liar. Don't do that. <laughs> gonna do it. Or I'm definitely do that. Either one. So Alrighty though. Uh thank you all for watching. And we'll see you next time.